What's going on YouTube? This is Mason AJ with the Aficionados. I'm here all kind of by my lonesome. Lance Excalibur is off saving the world or doing some other duties, you know. So it's up to me today to bring you our arrow reaction video by myself. Um, just going straight into it, I was really, really scared of that after such a phenomenal season finale that Arrow really wasn't gonna, you know, pretty much hold the boat. I mean, Tuna is only the second episode, but this is coming from, from a show that, like, after we got like to the third, fourth episode, maybe even fifth episode, of season two, I was just like, I'm kind of out. And I had, I kind of came back in, in and out, in and out. But um, it still continue, continue to go strong. I have a couple, a couple of points. Um, in the first episode, I, I, I made this, uh, I made this point where I didn't if Thea, Laura, and Diggle were having so much trouble with taking care of the ghost. Why didn't Thea like pick up the phone to call, you know, pretty much call the assassins at the time, at least as backup before if things were really, really that that dire. I think things, you know, it made me really, it made me really downplay the threat. And I understand that Thea doesn't just want to go back over to the assassins, but it's also not like. You know, like they like they out to like get her as well or something like that. Like they know where she is, they know what she's doing. And if she had got on the phone, but hey, daddy, you know, daddy Rashad go, these ghost dudes hurt me, I figured they would come and take him out. But now the assassins are really getting reintroduced back into the society. Diggle did not get, you know, or as we referred to him as in the last episode, Gangsta B Diggle did not get as much screen time here. He was mostly regular to the background. But once again, whenever he was on camera, Man was that dude hitting hard and such a force. I can't believe it's just like everybody else is still doing karate. He's like, ba da da, gun, bam, done, just done, <laughs> and everything else. Um, Oliver is still being doing Oliver things. To be honest with you, if you know, I'm not completely sold on the whole. I'm Green Arrow now. I'm doing things different. I feel like we just like you doing more of the same. You just, you just kind of gave yourself a colorful name. But I also do like how if you watch the Flash episode, you you see Oliver's announcement to the world that he's now a Green Arrow, and even Cisco from the Flash is like, I hate when they put colors in their names. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it's still a very good episode. Um, where we got a lot, we got a lot of plot points. We see how um, Oliver's Oliver's friend or Oliver's mom friends were running from there, but then her daughter gets kidnapped by a dude who wants to pretty much be a member of Damien Dark's Hive unit or Hive Commando forces and everything. And I understand, and that was actually that was actually a, night, a little bit nice to see. It was a little nice to see that some. For, for, at least from a bad guy's perspective, people who are aspiring to be part of Hive and the recruitment process and the, 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 the full nature of individuals, but you also got to see how even David and Dark have somewhat of a somewhat of like a moral code or at least at least a line, as like to put it. And I kind of definitely understand that because the dude that he originally hired to take out the take out the mayor, like you know, mayor candidate, did feel a little bit sloppy. Now I gotta say his hand to hand skills though was on point. He actually had one of the most amazing weapons I've ever seen in all of science fiction, nerdum, fandom, whatever, which was, it was a, like an electric plot staff. Well, pretty much it was a cattle prod. It was like an extended cattle prod because it was hitting you over 5,000 volts. But then at one point in time, it extended into a three shakes and staff and he he put the beat down on Oliver. It was like, shut up, green After this, they, they gonna call you broken out. They didn't hit you with the, he didn't hit you with the electricity. And then you go down. Um, they actually, they actually brought up a point in here where we, we they acknowledge Thea's uh, increasingly aggressive nature, which to me felt right. It wasn't like anger front. I know a lot of people would disagree, especially, but this really did feel like Thea was doing things that Oliver, Oliver himself was doing back in season one. And I know a lot of people were like, oh no, he was he was kind of like semi Batman back then, and you know we didn't like that. We wanted him to be more of a good guy. That's cool, but last time, last time I checked. We were at war with someone who was not only magical, super strong, and damn near like I don't know, connected, connected to some ancient voodoo god or whatever like that. But also, um, got an army of super trained, super geared up people. Like I feel like these these are dudes that fight that um. <laughs> I feel like if you ever played Crisis the video game, I feel like these guys have like level one of the Christ, special crisis armor. The only thing they don't do at this point is go invisible and have, and have super strength, but everything else seems to kind of be there because they seem to be on point. And it, it knows how it takes like one or two of the heroes to fight off a unit of these people. So that means anybody else who wasn't already a superhero, they would just get gunned down, like straight up gunned down. Um, 
but they ain't not well, well you know, Arrow is the guy to man. I like that watching the whole sparring session. Like, bum, bum, bum. Oh, you, you're going too far. Bum, 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 bum. You're not enough. Bum, 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 bum. But they even did was looking like, yo, you, you kind of forget. Um, I'm a kind of, I'm kind of gonna put the beat down on you, Oliver. You might be my big brother, but you, but, but you gonna be mine today. And Thea puts him down and everything else. And here's my thing with Oliver. One, you, out of all the experiences that you've been through, you thought, oh, you know, when Raj told me that, or when Malcolm told me that she, that when you go into the pit, that, that this is what happens and everything, and you, you seem fine. Does, does anyone ever really seem fine after dealing with the legal assassins? Like, literally, anything that has legal assassins attached to it, if you're a legal assassin's side company, if you're the legal assassin's janitor, Okay, you don't walk away from that like untouched. If you're the if you're the company in China somewhere that gives the legal assassins their paper to sign their notes on who they gonna assassinate, you will somehow get in touch by that. Like you don't just mess with the legal assassin, especially with the Lazarus Piff and life and death and all that, all those type of things coming up, and just walk away just straight up okay. You know, and that was the thing I was like, no, dude, like, after all the things that you've been through, you thought that she was okay because she didn't go to half of the stuff you've been through. Technically speaking, you might even say she might even go into a little bit worse. But, you know, that's that. Um, touching on Thea, touching on the bad guy, touching on Diggle, on Gangsta B Diggle. Um, we finally got to see, you know, because I was always wondering this, you know, I'm really looking forward to the show Legends of Tomorrow, which features White Canary and Captain Gold and Heat Wave and Hot Guy and Hot Girl and a whole bunch of, pretty much a whole. Justice League, Avengers, Mitch Mass and Heroes, and we, as always, it has yet to be answered how White Canary, who is little sister, comes back. So now we finally get the clues of like, oh, open the casket. I felt actually fully expected her to open the casket and the body not be there. Now I'm like, whoa, well, that's uh, that's enough for today. And you know? <laughs> and it was where the shit, pretty much shit, is just about to go down. So, but the one thing I really like about this was I really did, I really do like watching how Flash, or excuse me. Arrow feeds into Flash and how Flash ultimately feeds into Legend Legends Tomorrow, which ultimately feeds into both those shows. And everything is everything is different, but yet still ultimately ultimately coming together. And um that's the one thing I'm just really excited for. With with now that we have the Walking Dead back, with and Supergirls just right right around the corner, and Asians of Shield is still pretty much kicking ass in my in my book and I Zombie. With so many superhero shows, it's nice to get a certain level of continuity going down so it's like I said it's almost like reading a comic book where you read Batman and you read Superman but then you see how they have the Batman Superman or even there's just like a Justice League and you see how those two things come together and sometimes they even reference old things that happen but that's just me um oh I still get this episode um slightly higher than Flash you know some point oh, definitely give, give, give this a it's still going strong I'm, you really want to see how things like either rise or fall with the Arrow series until like issue 8 maybe, or not has that issue, but until like episode 3 or 4, I, I would say episode 5, even with, with anything of Arrow from, from seasons 1, 2, and 3, things don't start getting bad or worse until really, really like episode 5, where shows like Ace and the Shield, who at the time really didn't start getting good to episode 5, and Flash was still meh until around episode 7. That's just my personal opinion. Comment down below. Let me know how you feel about the, um, this week's ep episode of Arrow. I'm sorry I'm here about myself. I know usually Lance Scott, I mean him go back and at it, but we also did do episodes on Age of the Shield, Flash, and iZombie, so be sure to check those out. Um, I have a question for y'all. With Lo with Laura finding her sister, do how do you, I'm fine with you, how do you think this is going to feed? Do you think Laura's sister, especially for being dead for so long, I think she's going to come back a little semi-evil, a little bit semi-crazy? You know, um, how do you feel that her coming back up, up from the last of the pit, because you know it's going to happen, how do you feel that's going to ultimately affect her as a character? And will we actually get to see that in the Arrow series, or will that pretty much be more parlayed off to the Legend of Tomorrow series? I want to know. Make sure you hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button. You know, as Francis Calvin said in the last video, we're looking to get up to 1 million subscribers. You know, I would just like to hit 3,000 subscribers before 2016. But either way, we can't do it without you guys. I'm Mason AJ. Tune in next time. Thousand, get a million. I want a million motherfucking subscribers. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. A million. That's what I want. 3, America. 3,000. <laughs> I'm Lance Excalibur. This is Mason AJ. Don't say your name. Ah. I'm saying my name. I ain't finna say my name. <laughs>